Welcome to ACT Fitness Radio. The Health and Fitness Podcast is you to aspire, conquer, and transform. Here's your host, Adam Castro. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in to ACT Fitness Radio. My name is Adam Castro, coming to you from Whittier, California. And in this episode, Richard Rivera and I are talking about personal training. And one of the biggest aspects of personal training that we love is simply just giving encouragement to our clients while we are with them in a session, not just one-on-one, but also in a group setting during group training. Um, So you're going to hear us talk a little bit about that. And then we are actually going to talk a lot about our experience doing the Spartan Race Big Bear Beast, um, the very first Spartan Race in Big Bear, California. And let me tell you, it was absolutely brutal. You are going to hear brutal, the the word brutal, a couple times. Um, So you'll definitely hear a lot about that. And uh, before we get into that, I do want to mention, as this is nearing, uh, mid-November, we're getting closer to Thanksgiving, and right around this time, uh, marketing starts getting bigger with um, the marketing for cookies and baked go- goods and uh, getting on vacations and relaxing and being with family, which is all awesome, but there's one thing that also gets bigger, and it is our bellies. And so we need to make sure that this is not the time to get lazy. This is not the time to fall off track with our goals. In fact, we should be even more on track with our goals so that we can guilt-free enjoy the holidays with our families. Um, So I just want to encourage you in that way. And ACT Fitness Radio, along with ACT Fitness Media, um, Rich and I are going to be doing everything we can to encourage you along the way um, so that you can continue to reach your goals. Um, So be sure to visit those uh, free resources, our Instagram, at ACT Fitness Media. Uh, Be sure to tune in for future episodes here on ACT Fitness Radio and see our YouTube channel, ACT Fitness Media. And all of that can be found at www.actfitnessmedia.com. Without further ado, here's the episode. Dude, I'm... uh... I'm really liking the energy that you bring to the classes. And for me, I'm usually a very quiet person, which is why I've never been successful at leading group classes. But I feel like your energy is just like, boom, like you are, you just have a talent for just getting fired up. Thank you. Just Thank getting you. fired up. Yeah, I love it, man. Just the, um, it's just the energy I've had since I was a kid, I think, or, um, you know, I've never shared that I've been a singer my whole life. So being on that stage and. And yes, I still get that's right nervous. You, you know. guys don't know. Oh yeah, you guys don't know. Um, some of my clients might know about me, uh, but I don't even let it out that much. But but we break into song yeah. quite quite often. So I think that has helped me um, transition um, into being what I hope is a awesome coach uh-huh. when it comes to group classes and, and to be able to motivate and encourage and, and help these people who walk in through our doors, mm-hmm. um, to become successful. Yeah. And the workouts are challenging, but I believe when you're a great motivator and a great coach, it becomes enjoyable at the same time. Definitely. And, and I think too, uh, when you're, when you're training clients, sometimes they don't need to hear, Oh, you're not activating the glutes as much as you could be, or or maybe you're not. Um, hey, your your foot is in the right position, or hey, you really didn't set up for that the correct way. Sometimes they just need to hear, you can do it. Exactly. You know, sometimes they just need to hear, keep going, keep going. You can do it. You have it in you. Um, and I think that um, that that's so important that we don't lose that because it's important to make sure that we're setting up correctly. We warm up. You know, we have the correct correct. Um, the correct recruitment pattern for our, for certain movements, but at the end of the day, um, our mood, our our attitude has a lot to do with whether we're able to accomplish our goals for the day. Yeah, you're right. And I remember when I first started a, a tr- as a personal trainer, <laughs> I wanted to use the personal training words. And uh, for those of you who can't see, I'm using the quote unquote with my fingers. <laughs> um, you know, retract your scapula and uh-huh. make sure your um, quads are activated. And uh, and I thought, you know what, scapula is your back. Quads are mm-hmm. your legs. Like, Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exactly. Like, I'm like, <laughs> dude, just, you know, shoulders, legs, arms. You know what I mean? Let's keep it simple. Let's keep yeah. it to where that they can understand it. And like like you said, uh, unless I see that they're going to do harm to themselves, 
I'm just trying to be that encourager, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Of course, I want to make sure that they're activating the proper muscle that we're working on um, or proper muscle group. But unless I see them doing something really, really bad, I'm just there to coach them to greatness, man. Yeah, you know and, the, and the teaching can, can happen along the way. They're going to pick up on, yeah. on those words if we ever do say them yeah. and, and explain it. And the but, teaching um, can happen during the break time, right? Yes. Maybe when they're getting some water and say, hey, you know what? I noticed, you know, whoever. Um, Adam, hey, bud, I noticed that, uh, you know, you weren't fully doing X, Y, or Z. Mm-hmm. Here's how you do it. You know, a coach leads, follows, and does everything in between. And that's what makes a great coach. Yeah. So, and you know, we wanna... you don't want to do it out. Maybe they might be the person that gets embarrassed if you feel like, if they feel like you're calling them out. Yeah. So you kind of just, hey, you know what? Hey, I noticed this during the workout. Here, here's how you can maybe get better at this. Exactly. Not here's what you were doing wrong. Right. Here's how to improve because those words sound way better. When we're training clients, it's not our opportunity to flex our knowledge about the body because we, we may have gone through our certification courses, gone to seminars and everything, but that, that's not the opportunity for us to flex our knowledge. It's our opportunity to to create as least amount of situations where they're like, say it to me in English. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you just say? Can yeah. you say it in English, please? Because we're that's our job is to train and teach and encourage and, and to do it in a way that they're going to understand and what's going to help them reach their goals. Yeah, you know, the old quote, you know, they don't know how much you, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Exactly. And I know it's an old quote and I don't even remember who said it, but it still holds true to this day. You know what I'm saying? When, when clients, or I like the word members, when they see that you truly care about their well-being and them becoming successful and reaching their goals, man, the buy-in is, is it's automatic. Yeah. You know, so, and that's what I love about it. Well, speaking of needing encouragement, um, <laughs> uh, I, I really do wish I had someone in, in, uh, in my ear encouraging me during the Spartan race that we both did over in, uh, in Big Bear. In Big Bear. Big Bear. It was the first Spartan race, uh, the first Spartan race in Big Bear, California. Uh, it was a total of 12.2 miles. And um, wow, it was the toughest thing I think I've ever done in my life. I would agree. It, it was it was absolutely brutal. I and and uh, it was hilarious to see all the memes kind of circling Facebook and, and forums of saying like, you know, you came up one hill hoping that there would be relief at the end of it, and then you you'd have a little dip, and then boom, there's a bigger hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's how it was. There was a uh, yeah, there was a bunch of different names for Big Bear, and I don't even remember them, but. Halloween, right? Yeah. Because it was right before Halloween. Right. So, so Halloween and... Uh, it was brutal. Probably, yeah. uh, I wouldn't say probably. Um, equal to, if not slightly tougher than Lake Tahoe. Oh, yeah. Because you were at the, the World Championships, I Lake was, Tahoe. I was. And after that, I said that was the toughest race I had ever competed mm-hmm. in. And boy, was it tough. But um, Big Bear was equally as tough, if not tougher. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, to the last mile, to the last mile, we got hills. Yeah. Uh, and only it, it was only that last mile that we were actually on flat ground again. Exactly. But um, wow, it was uh, it was brutal. And and you know what? It's it's crazy because um, this was my first experience doing beasts, and you have done a couple beasts uh, mm-hmm. in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it, this was my test to see if I was actually going to be very you know, open to doing another one or not open to doing another one. Um, because I did the super in Monterey and I have to say like putting your body through 12.1 miles of straight up hills and then, and then, um, 31 obstacles, we did 31 obstacles. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just insane. My quads were spazzing up, um, halfway through, um, I was starting to feel pain in certain areas that I did not want to feel pain in. And you start mm-hmm. questioning, like, should yeah. I run? Should I walk? What's better? Uh-huh. Running gets me through a full range of motion, but walking is less impact. Like, it's, it's just crazy to put your body in that kind of position. Um, but, um, but at the same time, you find out what your body is capable of. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I think, um, I think accomplishing that for, for both of us was, was a huge, huge deal with just finding... You know, and, and Spartan stepped up their game with this race. The, if, if you're saying that it's the hardest one that you've ever done, and I imagine it is the hardest one that anyone's ever done. Yeah, um, I know there's some, I hear there's some harder ones out there. You know, Breckenridge is, is definitely a hard one. And uh, there's some other hard races, but I haven't done them. So okay. I can't say that they are. But I've heard a lot of bad things about them. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. What was what was the hardest part about this race that you find that you? So, think? so I think there's a couple things. I'm not sure if my body had totally recovered from Lake Tahoe. Uh, um, mm-hmm. I want to say it did, but then I want to fall back and say it didn't. That's why I didn't perform <laughs> <laughs> right um, in an amazing way in Big Bear. But um, so that's one possibility. Uh, maybe I wasn't fully recovered from Lake Tahoe. Um, another real thing was those hills were just killer you know um the three arus went off and we hit the start line and we took off and it was immediately uphill immediately steep Uh, uphill the difference between big bear and tahoe was tahoe did have probably two and a half to three miles of straight uphill but they weren't straight it was more of a switchback okay aka zigzags so it allowed you um the opportunity to run or walk at a fast pace Mm -hmm. big bear offered no possibility to run (laughs) um you know as we were in that first hill i saw my buddy um ryan and um he's like hey bud how's it going i'm like yeah it's going pretty good and uh, he's like let's go i was like so how does this compare to lake tahoe and he's like it doesn't because he had already done one full lap Uh and uh so that was because he's a he's a very competitive dude and he's an amazing (laughs) athlete so i'm like why would you do it again? <laughs> and uh, he's like, this is kind of my fun run. So anyways, he says, uh, this is nothing compared to Tahoe. Tahoe, mm-hmm. you can run a lot of it. Big Bear, you just really can't run any of it. So at that point, I think that messed me up mentally. And, and no fault of his at all. Um, because I think even though it messed me up mentally, it, it also helped prepare me for the yeah. the uh, amount the, of the amount of brutal down that was going to happen for, <laughs> I think it was really more like 12.6, but who knows. <laughs> and um, I want to say 50. <laughs> well, yeah. No, yeah. And then so for me, it was actually like 13.2 and 13.6 because um, I um, so I actually got off track. I don't know. You, you know, you wonder how do you get off track in a Spartan race? They have lines, but I just wasn't thinking at the time. So I, I, I had finished the Herc hoist and I looked to my right and there was a bunch of people doing burpees because a bunch of people had failed that obstacle. And I, I couldn't really see past them. But when I looked to my left, um, there were people running up this hill. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to follow them. looks like that's where the group of people are going. So where I'm supposed to go. Um, so when I went up there, this was right after mile marker two. And I went up, uh, did another obstacle, started, started uh, going down the first flat I had ever experienced in the whole race. Um, and uh, after I after I completed a little bit more of the course, I found mile marker seven. I was like, uh-oh, that was pretty fast. I don't think I just did five miles. You are miles. pretty fast, though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that fast. Um, but a mile marker seven, I'm like, uh-oh, that's, that's not good. Um, and, and I was doubting myself. I was like, that was not five miles, you know, or maybe it was. Maybe it was. I don't know. But I, as soon as I, I kept I kept running the course a little bit, kept running the course, um, and then finally I hit mile nine and I was like, with three miles left, I know this is not it. I, I know that I, I, I messed up somewhere. So, um, so from there I, I luckily was able to, well, not luckily, I had to climb this very, very steep hill. If any of you guys who have done the race, it was where the second, um, the second bucket carry was where you had water on the other side. So you had to go down that very, very steep hill and then another steep hill, and then uh, you just went up a little bit to mile marker nine. So I had to go up both of those steep hills to get back to that to that water station, and then I followed a road that actually, luckily, led me to where I got off track because um, it was right next to the lifts. And um, that trip was about half a mile long. So from there, I continued on to to what I needed to do, which was brutal mm-hmm. absolutely it was the hardest right there was when we started going downhill right um and that was the most brutal downhill i have ever ran ever in my life it was kind of fun i did i did i did run a little bit on those um it was a uh, it's big bear so yeah. there's snowboarding uh-huh. you know the snowboarding terrain. pipes or whatever yeah yeah so there was those those cool little round roundabout areas where you could kind of run on the side of the wall and that was mm-hmm. that was kind of fun but um horrible beating on the joints Absolutely horrible beating on the joints. Um, and then after that was the the tease, right? We went all the way down to right. the bottom, but then had to go all the way mm-hmm. up. And oh my gosh, it was just so brutal to go through all of that. And then once I, so once I did get to where I was before, 
I ended up um, I ended up uh, taking that same trail back to mile marker nine, and uh, all in all, ended up doing a whole extra mile. So that sucked. <laughs> but at least you were an honorable Spartan, and you went back and made up for it. Well, you know what? I I um, this was my first beast. And this completed my trifecta for 2017. And at mile marker nine, I really... Your first trifecta ever. Yeah, first trifecta ever. 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 It's my first one. And so I really had to ask myself, you know... I was, it wasn't even a question. It wasn't even a question. Like, I cannot go down the hill and get a medal if I didn't complete the course. Right. And you know what? At this time, I actually thought it was three obstacles because I, I had my phone because I was doing like Instagram story and I checked my phone and I didn't know there were two bucket carries. So I was just looking at the first bucket carry and seeing there's three obstacles in between what I had done and the first bucket carry. So I'm like, I know it's just three obstacles, but you know, and I could do, I could do 90 burpees at the end of the race, whatever. But you know what? I, I really want to go through those. Yeah. Uh, little did I know I missed like... <clears throat> 12, like, like 12 <laughs> obstacles. Um, but I, I, I knew I, I won. I didn't want to go down the hill and not receive a medal and then have to do another beast by the end of the year. Um, and then two, um, I, I definitely did not want to, um, to cheat. Like I didn't, uh, I'm not a cheater. I, I didn't want to, um, dishonestly get that medal and then, and then, um, it not mean anything. Right. Right. And I, and that would, I would be basically not earning that trifecta. So I decided, you know, whatever amount of time, whatever amount of running or walking or uh, damaging my joints was worth <laughs> actually earning that medal, actually yeah. earning that uh, that accomplishment. And so, wear the t-shirt proud. And wear the t-shirt proud. That's exactly. Right. That's right. Exactly. Um, and also, you know what, too, and, and, and this thought was like going through my mind as I was going through this, because it, it was a thought, too, to just not get the medal at the end and then just say, well, maybe I can do another beast by the end of the year. But when I when I um, went through the actual obstacles, I was like, how could I miss this? You know, yeah. like, oh, man, like this is just so brutal. Like the the obstacles and every and the, the terrain and everything, like how could I not do this? You know? And yeah. um, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I ended up going through with, with completing the actual course and not uh and not just saying no to doing that. Right, so, exactly. Oh man. But that course was, was brutal. Brutal. Um, and you know what? For me, I I decided by the end of it that I probably would not want to do another beast. And the only reason behind that was because there were plenty of times during the race when I was when I was in that position of like, do I walk? Do I run? I'm in pain. Uh, is is walking better or running better? And that answer was different at different times of the race. Um, and for me, thinking about like the health of my body, I was just thinking, man, that's that's not a position I would ever want to put in my body. And I and I had trained for hills. This was the first. This was the first race that I actually trained in hills. And I brought with me a water pack, and I did bring with me those goo, um, those goo energy um, gel packs. Gel packs, yeah, and um, which which were amazing. Like, totally gave me a second wind. Um, then that second wind got smaller and smaller, but <laughs> gave me gave me a second wind every time I had one. Right. Um, so that was awesome. But um, but yeah, I, I I realized I did not want to put my body in that position. However, however, I was talking to my client about it. And, um, <laughs> and you know, you know how, how the further away you get from the race, the more right, that you the miss more it, you no, do it, the more, the, no matter how brutal I thought for sure after Monterey super, I was never going to want to do another super ever again. And for sure, I want to, I want to be able to do one again, uh, in Monterey. But, uh, I, I, uh, my, my client brought up the point that you don't even know what your time was then. Cause you did the extra mile. So you don't even know, <laughs> you, you don't even know what you would be capable of right. in completing the course. So yep. I'm like, gosh, darn it. You're right. So if I ever did want to, you know, give my own competitiveness justice in like going for time, I would have to do the whole race again. Well, it is coming up again. They did in announce that Big Bear, Big Bear yes. will be back. It will be back in May. Yeah. And then I have to make the, I, I decided I wanted to just do sprints for next year and there is a sprint there. So I have the decision of whether I want to do it. If I want to do the beast to see what my time would have been or to um, to make that one of the sprints that I do, because I think if I were to do the beast and then the sprint, my my performance on the sprint would be would, would suffer. Right. Um, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there. Right. Yep. Anyways, um, any final thoughts fun. about the race? 
Um, no. I, I, I'll be honest, um, since we're all about honesty, right? Uh, for those of you who did the race, <clears throat> um, I don't know, was it mile one? In between mile one and two, I don't even remember which miles. It's all a blur to me now. The Walking Dead uh, miles? Yeah, right after the um, monkey bars. Um, you know, finish the monkey bars, you jump off, you make your little right turn, then you go left and you see this hill. And I looked up and I was just like, another freaking hill. Oh, yeah. And um, I'll be honest, I've never thought about quitting anything in my life. Mm. Halfway up that hill, I thought about quitting. And although pride is a bad thing, had it not been for pride at that very moment of what you would have thought, what my wife would have thought, what my team would have thought, mm. um, had I been there on my own, I would have probably quit. Or I could say I, I would have quit. Um, but like I said, in this very instance, thank God for pride. <laughs> uh, because it's what pushed me to keep going. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know what? Because I try to be the best motivator that I can. And in my mind, I thought, how can I tell? How can I bring out these people? I didn't force you, right? Or I didn't force my team to come out. But how can I tell my team to come out and do a race, mm. yet I don't complete it? Right. You know right. what I'm saying? How can I say, you know, oh, just do as I say, don't do as I do, you know? So at that point, that's what pushed me. And, you know, right around, I wouldn't say I, I a couple miles later, I just totally became 100% and, you know, freaking <laughs> super Spartan or anything like that. But around mile three and a half or four, you know, I just started to rebuild. I started to rebuild my confidence and, yeah, yeah. and to say, hey, you can do this. And, and you know, you got over the hardest because that was the hardest part that I could think of. And, um, you know, you and some of my other teammates were like, Hey Rich, come on, let's do this. And, and I just had to take a break and, and yeah, yeah. you know, I don't know, I was counting like 25 steps, then take a, take a 20 second break and go at it again. And, you know, and that's just life, right? Mm -hmm. We, we hit obstacles and we need to take a break and then we refocus, we re-energize and then we go at it again. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so much of a, a life analogy for me. And, um, you know, it just brought focus to me. And after that, it was just like, it was, it was still hard. It wasn't easy. None of this race was easy. But I think at that point, it really helped me refocus. And um, if you want to say re-energize, even though I never felt energized, <laughs> but um, <laughs> mentally and psychologically, it re-energized me. Yeah, yeah. And just the support that I got from you and my team and my wife who hadn't trained or anything since Monterey. Mm. So I'm thinking, man, if my wife is going through this, I got to go through it with her and I got to go through it with you, like, you know, people like you and my teammates and, and everybody who was there with us. And we did it together. Absolutely. So and that's you know what it. pushed me, man. Yeah. And I wonder too, like you, you mentioned one of your friends came up and was telling you like, Hey, this race doesn't even compare to the last one we, that we did. I wonder if that little seed of, of just you, I mean, even if he was encouraging you saying you've got a, you've got a real big, um, accomplishment ahead of you, you may have taken that as a negative thing and that might've planted the first seed of doubt. Um, in you as to whether you could complete it or not and then the first time you got tired second seed of doubt and then the yeah. first time you felt the soreness or whatever like third seed of doubt and that that might have built on you and I think you what you needed was that time to was was that time to really think about am I going to let these overcome me or am I going to overcome those doubts right and um yeah because it was definitely you know even from other people that I had seen who had done the, the Tahoe they're like, yeah, it's tough, and it, it was, it was honesty. They were being honest, but yet they're this, you know, they're my, they're my boys. They're, they're like Spartan family to me or OCR family to me, and, and they were being encouraging, like, hey, dude, basically saying you've done stuff in the past, like you can do this. And, yeah, uh, so. and that's just that's just more a reason for us when we do these races to be nothing but an encouragement to the yeah. people running and yeah. running with us. I mean, we we are we are all Spartans when we're out there and. And um, our goal is to finish strong yeah. the best that we can, the best mm -hmm. that we can personally with our team, with our with our fellow runners, is to um, just encourage, encourage, encourage yeah. as much as possible. And that, I think that's the most fun part about Spartan is the community, um, you know, just cheering on, helping, you know, um, 
seeing people getting cramps and giving them a mustard pack. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> I swear Heinz or whoever makes mustard is making way more money <laughs> than they ever have in their life before Spartan. Yeah. <laughs> or before or OCR in general. And, um, you know, just to be there. I might not know the person's name or a guy or girl's name, but you know what? If, if we can lend a helping hand, that's what we can do. And, and, and you know what? It all... It all Transfers over to life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Spartan, you know, Tough Mudder. There's a tons of OCR companies out there. When we're helping somebody on the course, we mm -hmm. should be able to do that in life. Yeah. You know, um, so it, it's just it's just a learning ground. And guess what? Sometimes sometimes life is just like the big bear beast where you're going up a really, really hard hill and you don't know if right on the top of that hill, just around the corner, <clears throat> is even more hill. Is yep. even even more that you've got to try to overcome and conquer, and it and it does just kind of teach you that that you do have it in you to keep going. You do have it in you to press on and to just take each step by step by step, each breath that you take. Even I mean, we the higher you get, the higher you get into that into that hill, the 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 harder and harder it is to breathe. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, not only your heart rate, but the altitude and and um, the fatigue and everything happening all at once. But um, but once you're done. Um, I think you see when you look behind you, uh, that it was, it was, um, accomplishable. Yeah. It was all worth it. Yeah. And it was worth it. So yeah. Crazy. <laughs> well, um, if you're interested in doing a Spartan race, <laughs> go to Spartan.com. <laughs> right. That really got them to want to do it. <laughs> and, and in all honesty, we're here, we're alive, and I, and I believe that we're better for doing that race because yeah. it did challenge us in ways that we've never been challenged before, yeah. uh, emotionally, physically, uh, mentally, and um, that is the biggest reason why I've, continued, why I've continued to do Spartan races is because when I did my first one and I realized like, whoa, I need to get ready for this next obstacle and this, this next obstacle and this person right behind me is saying, hurry up. Um, not really saying that, but you know, they're, I can see they're Feeling waiting the for pressure. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, man, even if I'm ready or not, I, I got to do this. Yeah. And let's be honest, not all races are like Big Bear, you know, this no, no, no. coming up next year, there's going to be one at Prado Park in Chino, California. Mm -hmm. like, that's flatter than whatever you want to put in there. Um, <laughs> um, that's flatter you know, than a pancake. Yeah. There's hungry. <laughs> um, there's literally no hills there. So it's going to be flat. It's perfect for a first time OCR person. You know what I mean? Um, but then there's Big Bear again. So it's just which type of race do you want to prepare for? Yeah. Which type of race do you want to start with? You know, if you're that person who's getting off the couch, which we strongly encourage, hey, Prado is the place to go if you want to do Spartan. Yeah. Warrior Dash, Terrain Race. There's so many obstacle OCR companies out there that cater to every different individual's fitness level. And we, I encourage, I train people to get ready for OCR. That's right. And um, so I encourage everybody, man, just try one. Freaking try one. Make that your New Year's resolution. Absolutely. Whether it's an OCR, whether it's a 5K, whether it's a 10, it don't matter, man. Yeah, and, and I think the, the moral of the story there is do something hard. Yeah. Do something hard because the... If you live your life without actually challenging your body and, and in all of those ways, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, if you do not challenge your body, you will not change. Yep. And I think um, we all want to change for the better. That's the whole meaning behind ACT Fitness. We want to aspire towards something, conquer it, and then be transformed by it. Mm -hmm. And um, and so even if it's not a Spartan race, even if it's not a, a half marathon, 5K, whatever, like do something hard. Right. Challenge your body and then... And then know that you can conquer it and that you can overcome it and be transformed by it. And just it's those steps that lead you to realize that maybe I am capable of doing a Spartan mm -hmm. race. Maybe I am capable of something that I never thought I was capable of. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm not sure if it was when I raced in Dallas or in Las Vegas um, last year sometime. There was a gentleman out there on the course by himself, a large man. And um, passing him up and I just hear him counting 50, 51, 52. And some dude asks him as we're passing, hey, hey, bud, what are you counting? He's like, I'm counting my steps to get through this race. And he says, after I get to 100, I start over. And that's life, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, he, and I don't know if he completed it, but he seemed like he was because he was – that was over the halfway point. Mm -hmm. And um, so in my mind, if, if I can remember correctly, I believe it was in Las Vegas, the harder obstacles had already been completed. 
Maybe there was one more after that, but he had already got through the toughest part of the race. And like, like in life, right? You get through the toughest part of the storm in your life or whatever you're going through. And do the light, the light is so close. The end of that tunnel is yeah. so close. And, and I could just imagine, I could still hear him like 51, 52, 53. And, you know, I, I never found out if he finished or not. And I hope he did, but you know, that's, that's how it is. So it's like, just get off the couch or wherever you're at, decide, Hey, I'm going to do something. Something that you've never done before. And that's how this whole started for me. It was a bucket list thing, and I fell in love with it. And here we are about 20, 30 races later, and, uh, or more than that. And uh, I fell in love with it. But um, do something different. Do something that you've never done. You know, transform your life and have fun, dude. Simple. That's right. That's right. Do something and act. Yep. Well, if you'd like to find us, you can find us at, at ACT Fitness Media on Instagram, and you can find Rich at, at Rich Rivera Fitness. And uh, visit our website, www.actfitnessmedia.com, for more free resources. Yeah.